Hi everybody, Michael B. The Game Genie here, and today is Judgment Day. Well, in the sense that I'll be reviewing the Terminator 2 Judgment Day 3 quarter scale home arcade from Arcade 1 Up. And after this intro, I'll be back. That's right guys, today we're going to be taking a look at Arcade 1 Ops version of Terminator 2, Judgment Day. This was the gun game I wanted above all others, so I was overjoyed when Arcade 1 Up announced it. However, there are some issues with the game, such as the cabinet doesn't 100% accurately recreate the arcade experience, and there's only one included game, so I was a little bit hesitant to buy. In the end, this was the game I wanted, and there was no other version coming in the foreseeable future, so FOMO won out. Let's find out if I'm happy with my purchase, and if I think you'd be happy too. Terminator 2 Judgment Day was one of those showpiece arcade machines when I was a kid heading to the arcade after the movie came out with so many people crowding around it blasting Terminators and now here's a three quarter scale version from Arcade 1 Up sitting in my very own arcade, albeit with some compromises. First things first, we have to talk about how beautiful this machine is. Arcade 1UP did an impressive job recreating the original cabinet in the 3 quarter scale with the great attention to detail they always provide with the artwork on the cabinet, but also with this unique form factor. It is getting harder and harder to call these 3 quarter scale replicas however, as this cabinet is super tall standing at about 57 inches and right around the height of a traditional arcade cabinet. This is one of the biggest arcade 1UP cabinets yet with its impressive height, additional length to accommodate the control panel with the included sending guns, but where this cabinet most definitely feels 3 quarter scale is in the width category as it is standard in that regard. The side art is a fairly accurate recreation of the original cabinet, just a little smaller and lower than what it looks like on the original. This was due to the difference in length on the side panels as the original panels were much deeper to accommodate the guns and the appropriate rotation. However, here where the guns were moved that wasn't essential or possibly due to the packaging restrictions, the side image of Arnold as the Terminator had to be resized as well to accommodate the shape while maintaining as much as possible of the original image. It's still pretty badass to see the T100 every time I walk into my arcade. The marquee is fantastic and easily one of the best dark marquees they have ever released on an arcade 1UP cabinet. Typically a black background on an arcade 1UP marquee means it will be washed out but this looks fantastic. A big reason is that Arcade 1UP have shifted to a new method for their light up marquees where instead of using the standalone light box marquee, here they provide a slide in panel more like a real arcade and a separate light bar that is a little further back inside the cabinet. The result is a better looking marquee that has more even light distribution, no visible hotspots or washout. Man, this looks great. Only complaint is that the marquee seems a little bit shorter than the standard arcade one up light box marquee. I would like to comment that I am so glad that a lit marquee was added to this gun game where Big Buck Hunter didn't have it included, and hopefully this dispels the rumors the light from the marquee would affect the sending guns technology. The screen looks great with vibrant colors and a crisp picture which we have come to expect from Arcade 1 Up. I do love, and I mean love, the bezel around the screen with the almost metallic silver they use for color here just setting off the whole cabinet. It really looks sharp. One of the big compromises compared to the original cabinet is how deep they could make this machine, like we talked about with the artwork earlier. The original cabinet had a very deep set monitor with lighting effects actually in the cabinet that led to the incredible immersive experience the original arcade provided. Here unfortunately both those elements are lost in translation. Another big element to bring up is the screen is literally vertical with no slant just like on Buck Hunter. I assume this is a design choice necessary for the Sindon technology but I don't know for sure. Unfortunately, there is one extremely negative issue to discuss when talking about the screen, and that is the apparent fixed softening filter they have used. I have said it once, and I will say it again, filter options are fine as long as they are an option, but never as the standard. Sadly, despite RK1UP receiving negative feedback every time they have done this, they have once again included the softening filter with no option to remove it. 
I assume that they had some concerns regarding the pixelization of the digitized images used in the game and how that look has potentially aged poorly and how it be received, but as past feedback has told you, we want sharp pixels. I have played this game countless times now using emulation with no screen filter and it looks fantastic, so this inclusion was not necessary. The one unknown for me is if it was necessary for the Sindon light gun tech, but again, I'm not a scientist. The one saving grace is you actually have to stand about 2-3 to three feet back from the cabinet to use the Sindon tech correctly, so the softening filter isn't as noticeable at that distance. Dear God, hopefully Arcade 1UP can and will correct this softening filter in a future update. One of the biggest changes with the Arcade 1UP 3 quarter scale recreation compared to the original is the divisive choice to change the guns on the cabinet as the original used a potentiometer and guns that were mounted to the cabinet while Arcade 1UP have elected to revisit their Sindon tech they previously used for the big Buck Hunter cabinet. It's weird because this is the first time that Arcade 1UP have delivered a marquee cabinet without real feel arcade controls and the experience is closer to what playing the home version was with a menacer on the Sega Genesis rather than the arcade experience. There is an argument to be made for if this arcade was made today this is the tech they would use but that doesn't make it sting any less. One of the other possible limitations to using the mounted guns is the depth from control panel to screen and width of the control panel as there just would not have been room to allow movement for two players. Despite the fact that these aren't arcade accurate controls they do work extremely well and this is my favorite way I have played this game since the original arcade. I have played this game with a trackball on the ALU and Gamer Pro and while that experience is supposedly more similar to the original this is definitely worlds more fun. The guns are incredibly accurate as I don't notice any lag while moving the cursor on screen to shoot down an enemy. Having an actual gun in your hand compared to the trackball is a no brainer for a better experience. The guns are connected with a detachable cord and are plenty long to get to a comfortable distance away from the machine to assure the gun's accuracy. The guns do feel incredibly light and more like a toy to an adult like myself but I try and remember that these are also made for kids and seeing my 5 year old handle the gun I can certainly understand why. The guns do have a built-in rumble feature that isn't as powerful as I would personally like, but it is noticeable. One awesome reason to include the rumble was to replicate the feeling the gun gave as its rumble depleted as the gun was almost depleted of power, which is a nice touch here as the action is so frantic on screen it's hard to follow your power meter. I don't know what they use to achieve the rumble feature, but it does add an awesome layer of immersion that really adds to the overall experience. If you personally do not like the rumble, there's a switch on side of the gun that will allow you to turn it off. Overall, I am super happy with the guns, and again, if it can't be arcade accurate, this was the next best thing. One nice touch, despite the cabinet not having accurate controls, is that they still recreated the control panel from the original arcade. This includes creating holders for the guns on the control panel that would mimic the look of the mounted guns while in a track mode. They could have saved a bunch of money and just made a holster around the side or holes in the cabinet to place the guns, but this was a nice touch. Another interesting thing to note is there are two start buttons for each player on the control panel. I would assume this was an ergonomic measure to allow people on either side to play with the hand of their choice and leave the other hand free to hit the coin in button. One disappointing aspect is the kick plate as it does not include the molded coin door. In fact, that's all I am saying going forward. If it doesn't have the molded coin door, it's an automatic fail as they are just so nice. The riser I anticipated being a little bit bigger than the standard riser, which it is, but not in the way I expected. I anticipated a 15 inch riser like with the stand up racers Star Wars and Tron to give the cabinet some extra height as Big Puck Hunter was universally panned for being too short and needing it. Instead rk one up did hear the constructive criticism to add some extra height to its shooter cabs and have done so by adding the recently developed side panel extender method. This gives the cabinet the extra height it needs to play comfortably while not needing a higher riser. While the riser isn't higher it is deeper which was necessary to accommodate the longer sides of the cabinet. The artwork is pretty nice and ties in with the cabinet while borrowing from the art on the control panel. So overall this is a very impressive home arcade. It's stunning and it recreates the original arcade so very well. However it does take some liberties with how the game is played which will take away from the nostalgic experience but it doesn't mean the game isn't super fun. There is however one other major issue with this cabinet in fans eyes and that's the fact it only comes with one game. So the question is, will that one game provide enough fun and enjoyment for people to justify this purchase that are used to buying mini multicades from Arcade 1UP? Terminator 2 is one of the most iconic arcade games of all time and for the first time ever Arcade 1UP is bringing the arcade experience home in your very own 3 quarter scale arcade machine. 
For those of you not familiar with the game, it's your typical on-rails side-scrolling gun game where you shoot your way across seven stages to complete the game. One of my favorite comments heading into the cabinet being released was a commentary on price with Kevgret saying it's $100 per level. And if the number of games is the measuring point you attribute to your arcade dollar's value, there isn't a lot here to justify your purchase. However, if you are like me and your value comes from having machines centered around one specific game that you have nostalgia for and want to own a modern recreation, stick around because Arcade 1UP may have made something you will really dig. Included with the cabinet is Terminator 2 the arcade game. And that's it. Well, they also included this making of documentary that I'm sure some people will dig, but other than capturing footage for this review, I will never use it on this cabinet. I guess they were limited due to licensing on what they can include and thought, well, this is something. Extras like this make sense on a disc or bonus disc with a game, but not here. Maybe a tin sign would have been more effective. I also typically never suggest putting a console game on a cabinet, but they easily could have included the Super Nintendo or Genesis version of the arcade game which would have been totally playable, but I guess the comparison to the experience with the detachable gun could have been a concern. So what we get here is Terminator 2 Arcade, and thankfully that is an awesome thing as this game is great and plays like it was made for the Sin and Light Gun technology, which we know it wasn't. Like I said, there were some compromises with the experience with the size and shape of the cabinet and the controls used, taking away from the nostalgia and immersion that the original cabinet provided, but the experience is still super enjoyable, and I am smiling ear to ear from playing this game in my at-home arcade. The gun is extremely accurate and I'm having fun precisely picking my enemies apart on the screen. The missile and shotgun are controlled by pressing a button on the side of the gun which also works extremely well. Last but not least, like I talked about in the section on the gun, the rumble feature may not be perfect but man does it add so much to the overall experience. For those who assume this is a quick beat it and you are done experience, I have to tell you it's not that simple as there are two specific stages that cannot be beaten by continuously quartering in where the first one is protecting future John in the truck in the apocalypse after judgment day and second is the dreaded helicopter chase which still to this day I cannot beat. If you are struggling with the difficulty you can go into the options and adjust several features to make the game more accessible to you. One, which I may eventually have to use at least to test out the last stage, is it lets you skip stages, so if you still can't beat that helicopter stage, screw it, skip it, and let's kill the T-1000. For those questioning the replayability after beating the game, they have included global leaderboards so you can test your skills against other Terminator 2 arcade one-up owners. This doesn't do a lot for me in a game like this, and I much rather would have preferred online co-op play so me and 19k Fox could have took down that helicopter together, but I will say seeing my score above his in the leaderboard did bring a smile to my face. Will you want to play the same game over and over though? Well that depends on what kind of gamer you are, and personally I'm looking forward to playing this with other people and sometimes just after a long day at work blowing away some Terminators to relax and blow off steam. I will certainly find it replayable, but again, I don't buy these things as multicades, so decide for yourself. So guys, that's my look at the Terminator 2 Judgment Day Arcade 1UP. Overall, I'm relatively happy with my purchase here and I'm having a blast playing Terminator 2 in my home arcade. Is there room for improvement with this cabinet? Absolutely. Like for one, I wish the controls were more accurate to the original arcade. I also wish there was an option to turn off that awful softening screen filter they included. And last but not least, I wish there were more included games so we could expand the gun game experience at this price point. But personally, I wanted a T2 cabinet and this is the one we got. And after spending some time with it, I'm glad my FOMO got the best of me. Should you purchase the arcade one-up Terminator 2? Well, it depends. I think if you're a big fan of the movies and you want this as a piece of memorabilia or you're a big fan of the arcade cabinet itself, you might be happy with what you get here. But if you're just looking to pick this up as an arcade gun game and you're unsure, maybe the better route is to get a multicade and an arcade gun that's compatible and that may be the best bet for you. So guys, let me know in the comments what do you think of the arcade one up Terminator 2? Thank you so very much for watching, everybody. This is Michael B. the Game Genie, and hasta la vista, baby.